Good morning. What do you think makes a great fighting game? Is it the gameplay? How about the character selection? Jerk. Or do you just like to vibe to the story and enjoy the music? Well, I'll tell you a game that had it all. Arguably the best Tekken game. It's Tekken 5 on the PS2 and PS3 and PSP and Arcade. Okay, there are a few versions. But this was the game that changed Tekken forever. Tekken 5 is released in arcades 2004, but let's not start there. Before the game was released, the Tekken team were not in a good state after the commercial failure failure of Tekken 4. You see, Tekken 4 was brave for going in its own direction and going for the more grounded and slow approach, but Tekken up to that point was an arcade fighter with fast-paced gameplay. The game before that one, Tekken Tag 1, it was the polar opposite of Tekken 4. It actually got to the point where the creator of Tekken left Namco for a whole year because of Tekken 4. The pressures and criticism from making a game like Tekken 4 was just too much for Harada. But eventually, after the higher-ups pleaded and encouraged him, he came back. And with the 10th anniversary of Tekken around the corner, this time, Harada and the Tekken team were not messing around. Meticulous research was conducted into the failure of Tekken 4 and the successes of Tekken 3. They wanted to make a game that was for the player. For the players. So development was ready to go, and the Namco higher ups were willing to invest in this project, so new softwares were brought in to increase the character animation's complexity, and they were also able to bring in stuff like fire for the first time in stages. Sometime later, at E3 2004, the game was revealed to the world because it was always E3 back then, alongside Nina's game. Death by Degrees. Hmm. I might play this game. And in the lead up to Tekken 5, the TV commercials were way ahead of their time. You've probably seen these being mean before. As soon as you open up Tekken 5, you're presented with this sequence right after the end of Tekken 4. Still to this day, I get goosebumps watching this. This intro was so good that it inspired the Tekken developers to make a movie, Tekken Blood Vengeance. <laughs> it, it, don't watch it, don't. <laughs> the game features your standard story battle survival arcade, you know the deal, but hold on. Hold on. You can play Tekken 1, 2 and 3 in Tekken 5 based. Story mode came with the big boss, Jinpachi Mishima, and if you've ever played against this character, you know how it feels to be scared and helpless as a 200 year old giant demonic man laughs at your mere existence. <laughs> The IGM reviewers didn't stand a chance. The story tried to grab your attention straight off the bat by saying Hayachi's dead when in reality he just got more angry, and characters not involved in the main story were given more crazy and comedic endings. This may have killed off some potential character development, but the CGI visuals were a huge upgrade compared to the games before, and some of them were quite memorable. Ten, nine. Moving on to the gameplay, Tekken 5's gameplay is the current blueprint for all Tekkens following it. Movement options were fast and agile, similar to Tag Tournament 1, but this time, you could sidewalk. The combo system wasn't restrictive, and it gave you freedom to get a satisfying amount of damage, but not too much all the time with extenders. But let's not lie here, ridiculous damage was still possible in Tekken 5. The game's backdashing, sidestepping, sidewalking, and general gameplay all came together to make high-level Tekken seem mystical to people who casually 
actually played the game. It was just so fast. The competitive scene was getting bigger than ever and there was one man named Qdance who was causing a lot of trouble in Asia. This man's devil gin would cause fights to break out in the arcade because he hell sweep too many times. He was seen as the best in the world at the time and when he went to a Tugeki tournament in Japan and lost to Japanese players, he challenged all of them to casual games afterwards and he ended up beating every single one of them one by one. This was such a humiliation that this elevated the rivalry between Korea and Japan to the next level. Meanwhile in the US, MLG tournaments were beginning to spring up everywhere so there were more tournaments involving prize pools. And EVO 2006, the winner Crow won $5,000 when Ni nee, in Tekken 7 2022, he only won around $7,000 so prize pools at EVO basically reached their peak in Tekken 5. You may have caught on that the life bars have been changing colours throughout this video and that's because there were many different versions of Tekken 5. The first being Tekken 5 the original with orange life bars but did you know that in arcade straight after the console release there was a version called Tekken 5.1 and it fixed a lot of problems like Steve's infinite and Nina's ridiculous moves but this was never released to console. I'm not sure why but we got the broken version. It was later on in 2006 where Tekken 5 got an update worldwide with the release of Dark Resurrection. Many players will tell you that this is the greatest fighting game in the franchise and maybe the greatest fighting game ever just for the gameplay alone. Oh, I gotta tell you, it was perfect. Perfect. Everything, down to the last minute details. The PS3 release allowed Tekken to add more features that we'd never seen before. 1080p and 60fps, better balance, new characters such as Armor King, Lily and Dragonov, an online mode that was filled with players competing for the highest rank, which was Dark Lord back then. There was also the PSP version of Tekken 5 and usually with PSP games you don't get the same gameplay but Tekken Dark Resurrection, it just seemed to be a downscale with all characters being available along with their whole moveset, making it a viable way to practice whilst on the move. This was genuinely the method I used to learn my first ever combo as a scrubby lore. You win. <laughs> There's one thing that I just have to mention about this game, and that's the music. As I said before, Harada and the Tekken team were getting serious for this game, and they brought in the big boy composers for this one, and it shows. Tekken 5 was a masterpiece crafted in response to increasing doubt of the franchise. The Tekken team wanted to show the world that they knew how to make Tekken. Whilst Tekken 4 focused on realism at the cost of fast gameplay, everything in Tekken 5 is constructed to give the player a satisfying gaming experience, high or low level. This is why the game feels so smooth to play and why characters move with such ease across these beautiful stages supplemented by a range of great soundtracks. It's easy to underestimate just how much this game did for Tekken. This is the first game to have a ranking system and later online. The full crush system where a move could go under another move. The first Tekken with customization including 600 unique items. The first Tekken in which each character used their native language to speak to each other which the game's quite well known for now. And the first Tekken to have both walled and waller stages in the same game. All this with the fundamental gameplay engine that we still see today in Tekken 7. And you can see why people believe that Tekken 5 was the best in the franchise. There's one thing for sure though, Devil Within was trash.